Thank you, Acting President. Um, a key question we in Darren Hitch's Justice Party ask a lot is who's looking out for the children? Before I was here, as you all know, I worked at the Sexual Offences and Child Abuse Investigation Teams in Victoria Police, otherwise known as Socket. Those that have worked in Socket are incredibly resilient people. The images we used to trawl through, the interviews we've had to conduct, the prosecutions we needed to file, this was not an easy task. The victim survivors we supported along their journey and the all too common disappointment of the justice system, it stays with you forever. But that is why it makes me grateful for the job that I have now. This role opens doors for me to work to prevent this abuse from happening, so less investigations need to play, take place at all. One of the regular occurrences we'd see in Socket was the abuse of children in state-run care. It makes me sick to say that residential care children were, and still are, constantly targeted by predators seeking to sexually abuse vulnerable kids. These children who had rocky upbringings, who potentially didn't have families that nurtured them, who faced addiction and disability in the home, were now being submitted to sexual violence. In this day and age, it's simply mind-blowing. As a police officer, we would often be involved in bringing children back to Resi Care, who had voluntarily left the home with older men to engage in sexual acts for drugs. I say voluntarily, but when you're 12, 13 or 15 years of age, you can't give consent to the sexual acts you engage in. It's scary stuff. This is just one of the many types of abuse I was tasked to investigate in my job as a soccer detective, and this work will never leave me, but it does fuel my desire to change things for the better in this place. Now, at the end of June, the Commissioner tabled a report called the out-of-sight inquiry into children and young people who are absent or missing for residential care. I recently read an motion in this place asking the government to tell us how they've addressed this very issue I've faced regularly in my socket days and issues that continue to this very moment. This was based on the 2015 Commissioner for Children and Young People, or the CCYP report, titled As a Good Parent Would. This report explores the issues surrounding resi care, specifically those who have experienced sexual abuse whilst in resi care. Last year, you may recall Ombudsman Deborah Glass also releasing a report focusing on five children in resi care who had allegedly been assaulted. She recognised that these incidents weren't isolated and that the CCYP had been calling for changes to the system for over a decade. The delay in action in response to these reports is infuriating. The CCYP report was completed in 2015 and one of the main recommendations was to significantly reduce the number of children in resi care. Well, it's six years later and I can tell you that this number has remained relatively stagnant. Like the outcomes of the CCYP and Ombudsman report, budget paper number three detailing service delivery says that DFFH has a goal to reduce the number of children in out of home care who live in residential care. The same budget papers had an expected outcome of 446 kids in residential care in 2020-21, with a target of 2021-22 of 455 placements. Now why is this number increasing, and how is this meeting the department's own goal? On the 4th of March 2020, an online article titled The Lost Kids, written by Elise Kinsella, who uh, was published online through the ABC, and this article stated that more than 600 children are running away from residential care homes each year. Again, I don't even blink an eyelid when I hear this. I've seen it with my own eyes. Even as a cop, there was little that we could do about it and it was just totally devastating. I don't discount the gravity to which these children in resi care have complex needs. I'm not saying that there's an easy fix to this. The more children we can get out of residential care and into stable loving homes, the better. This means foster care agencies will need more money. There's no denying this, but if it comes down to money, I'd make the point that residential care is very expensive. According to DFFH figures, a complex residential care placement is $301,000 per year. Besides the financial benefits and obviously, more importantly, the outcomes for our children, it's obvious that these kids are better off in other care options. Our foster system needs more foster carers and more respite carers. I've said it before in this place and I'll say it again. If we don't have enough respite carers ready to go, our foster carers will become fatigued and will withdraw. I do offer another solution as well, and I hope it's already on the government's radar. Kids Undercover are a not-for-profit who build one and two bedroom studios for a range of purposes. One of these, relevant to my contribution today, is that they support kids in out-of-home care, including kids 12 to 25 years, transitioning from resi care. Kids Undercover were the only preventative health uh, care organisation named in the recent homelessness inquiry as specifically needing additional funding. These studios cost $60,000 to build and they can keep a child unified in the family or a loving home with their grandparents uh, pending all, and other friends and family pending all necessary checks are done. 
obviously. I'm running out of time, but I would reiterate my call to the government as an outcome of this CCYP report that we need to expand foster care and invest in early intervention and primary prevention process approaches. In this case, in the case of the Kids Undercover, it's an innovative, proven way to keep families unified and kids on the right track. It's a no-brainer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Grimley. Uh, Mr Davis.